Hi, I'm Dr. Patrice Berry and I want to tell you a story. In my family, reading is a big thing. It is a big thing. It is like the road to freedom. I often think about Frederick Douglass and the woman who uh, was the enslaver in the house that he was enslaved to had taught him his letters or she had begun to teach him his letters. The man of the house heard them in these lessons and he, he interrupted and said, what are you doing? You cannot do this. And so he sent young Frederick Douglass out and he said to her, if you teach him his letters, he'll yearn for freedom because he'll know more. And so Frederick Douglass, who of course was listening on, said he had never equated these lessons with freedom. And from that on, then on, he vowed to learn to read. He would take biscuits from the house and trade them with poor white boys for them to teach him, continue teaching him his letters and whatever else it was that they were learning in school. So reading is freedom. My granddaughter's been reading a lot. Um, she stays with me during the week and so we read every morning, every night. And when we get to school, because I have to leave very early to get there, um, and so that allows us a lot of time on the other side. And so we read again in the car. And so she won the um, Reader of the Month Award for her school. So this was a big deal in our house. We were like, oh my God, yes. And she's looking at us like, ain't no big deal. We just, we read. read what do you, what do you look, what, why are you all happy? Well, on Sunday, I preached two sermons at um, St. Peter's Episcopal here in Savannah. And there was a woman afterwards, we were sitting and talking, and it turns out she teaches at Elena's school. But she teaches in the middle school. And so um, we were talking and I said, well, you know, I'm like that first car that gets there in the morning. And she was like, oh my God, that's you. I have been trying to figure out who that person was. She said, you get there so early. I see you in the car reading with your granddaughter. And I, you talk to Miss Nancy at the gate. And I see this interaction. And I was like, oh, my goodness, that is so wonderful. And so we were like, what? And I was like, oh, that's you. That's right behind me. And you, yes. And so the connection was fantastic. So yesterday I get to school. And I, I'm reading with Elena. And I hear this tap on the window. Or maybe we had moved on to Paw Patrol by then. Um, I hear a tap on the window. And I look up. And it's her. And I roll down the window and I introduce Elena. And Elena, who has looked at us like, this reading thing is no big deal. She, the, the wonderful teacher asked, um, so what did you read this morning? And I was like, the moon. And Elena said, the orange moon. <laughs> and she said, oh, that's so good. And Elena piped up and she said, and I'm the reader of the month. <laughs> and it was like, yes! So we laughed about how that early drive pays off. And it pays off in ways that you don't think of. Um, I would rather stay in bed a little longer or read a little longer what I want to read. I would rather not leave so early and listen to Frozen on the way and have to sit on the other side. But if we don't leave early, we don't get out because all the traffic and everybody else is leaving. I would not have made that wonderful connection with this woman. I wouldn't have made the wonderful connection with Miss Nancy, who's at the gate in the morning, one of the bus drivers. Yesterday, um, I stopped to pick up a donut for Elena and one for Miss Nancy. And I was like, do I have time? And I was like, take the time. And I had a cup of coffee for myself. And just as we pulled out to our turn, three cars collided. I would have been the fourth if I hadn't stopped for that donut. So sometimes leaving early and stopping to do a kindness and seeing the connections requires a little bit more. It requires breathing. <laughs> Reading is like breathing. I love you.